Now, all of us know that Churchill made all these famous speeches that we will fight them on the beaches, that we will fight them on the streets, we'll do anything to fight the Nazis, we'll never give up. But one of the things that people, many people don't know is that Churchill in private had a lot of his own doubts in, in early 1941, late 1940 and early 1941, whether in fact they could hold out. In fact, when he was called in by the king to be named prime minister in May of 1940, after France fell, uh, to replace Neville Chamberlain, whose policy of appeasement was, was an utter failure, he came out of his meeting with the king and he was only accompanied by one bodyguard from Scotland Yard. And this, and he turns to this bodyguard and says, do you know why I was called in to see the king? And the bodyguard said, yes, I think so. Uh, I, I, I wish you luck. He said, I'll, and basically he said something along the lines, I'll need it. It may already be too late. And when he said that, his bodyguard noticed that he had tears in his eyes. This is a very different view of Churchill than the one one normally sees. So he had doubts. Some of his supporters who was most fervent in, in repeating the message that Britain will never give up, that will eventually defeat Hitler and the Nazis, also had their doubts. Harold Nicholson was one of those supporters, a member of parliament. And while in public he was, he was pushing the Churchill line, at the same time, he, one of his letters reveals that he gave his wife and a cyanide pill and, get, and had one reserved for himself and said, look, if, if, if the Germans invade and they're taking over, we are going to die this way rather than be tortured by these guys. So the amount of doubt was considerable. And by the way, many Americans share that doubt. Joseph Kennedy had been, it was US ambassador to Britain through, through 1940. And he kept reporting he was that Britain was going to fall, the Germans were going to win. And, and so they were, and in, in America, you had the isolationist movement led by Charles Lindbergh, who also felt that way. So there are huge disparities in, in perception. 